All right, today is going to be about mandibular premolars. So just sit back and relax. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about these guys for the test. We're going to start on the mandibular first premolar, and we're going to look at that occlusal. So this is going to be a diamond shape. As far as size is concerned, this is the smallest of the premolars. It's smaller than the mandibular second premolar in all dimensions except crown height. And so if you recall back to the maxillary, maxillary premolars, that first premolar was the largest. And so this is going to be the smallest one. Okay, cusps. The lingual cusp is very small and resembles a cingulum. From an interproximal view, the facial cusp, so we're right here at the facial cusp, that is centered along the long axis of the tooth right there. Do you see that? It sits right above the long axis. And the lingual is just about in line with the lingual surface of the root. All right, going to the mesial marginal ridge. We're going to see a lot of questions about this. This is like guaranteed. If they ask you about a premolar, they're going to ask you about this. It's got a 45 degree angle on it. The mesial lingual groove right here makes the mesial marginal ridge run at a 45 degree angle. So this is a mesial lingual developmental groove that runs off the marginal ridge. So let's remember that it's the mesial lingual groove. It's on the lingual side. And that's because it's going to be down near the tongue. So to remember which tooth it is, just remember that the, the mandibular premolar is down near the tongue. And so it's the one that's going to have the mesial lingual developmental groove. This makes it the only posterior tooth that has a higher distal marginal ridge than the mesial marginal ridge. And so you'll see that a lot too. So one way they can test you on that idea is there's more of the occlusal surface that you can see from the mesial than from the distal. So remember the mesial marginal ridge is going to sit a little lower due to that 45 degree angle. So if you're looking at it from the mesial, you can see more occlusal surface than if you were looking at it from the distal. All right, snake eyes. This tooth is famous for its snake eyes. It's the only premolar that has a buccal cusp with a triangular ridge. So uniquely prominent that it features a mesial and a distal pit. So it's got this bulky triangular ridge right here, and so it's got these snake eyes right here. Note that the groove originates in an occlusal pit and extends onto a proximal surface right here. So we're thinking about this, uh, this ridge right here. It's actually originating in an occlusal surface. So it's going to start in the mesial pit and then run over to the lingual groove. Okay, there's no central groove because it's got that big triangular ridge and it may have a central pit. So uh, the root, it's going to have one root. I circled this because you can see from the lingual um, that we're going to see that mesial lingual developmental groove. This is going to be broader facially than lingually. And it's frequently seen with a slight concavity in the mesial and distal surface, and note that the root is not flattened in a facial lingual direction. So it's going to be flattened mesial distally. And then, uh, what is the most common root anomaly on this premolar? It's going to be a bifurcation. And so here I've got which of these is the mesial view. You know, occasionally you get questions asking you to be able to differentiate a between the mesial and the distal view of a tooth and the dead giveaway is that low marginal ridge there in the mesial and then also uh, that mesial lingual groove. All right, roots continued. It's They're usually free of a marked distal curvature. And here's a quick question for you. During endo on number 21, you suspect that a second canal most is most likely where? On the buccal or lingual? So if there's a second pulp canal present, it's most likely going to be found lingual to the first canal. 
Okay, here's some fun facts. So these are just um, some a quick review of some of the things you got to know about this tooth. It's the only tooth with a MMR at a grossly different angle than its distal marginal ridge. It's going to be the smallest premolar. It's got the narrowest and smallest root of all the premolar, all the premolars. It has the most prominent transverse ridge of all the premolars without central groove. It is the only tooth with a mesiolingual groove from the occlusal, running from the occlusal down to the lingual. And then it's uh, tilted lingually. And the gingival papilla is shortest between the mandibular first and second premolar. All right, on to the second premolar. Okay, the shape is going to be a pentagon from the buccal lingual. From mesial distal, we've got a rhomboid here, so this is kind of new. So we've got a rhomboid here. And then from an occlusal view, it's going to be a pentagon. Note that the lingual HOC is in the occlusal third. This is the only tooth to have its lingual HOC in the occlusal third, so you got to know that. There's two types. There's a two-cusp type and a three-cusp type, and we'll go into some details on these. So let's start on the two-cusp type. From an occlusal, you might see this described as a crescent. So if you look at the groove pattern, it will form either an either a crescent, like a U shape, if you see the U shape there, or an H shape. So here we've got the H right there. So you might see a question along the lines of which premolar is most likely to exhibit a crescent-shaped central developmental groove. And that's going to be the mandibular second premolar. Okay, the three-cusp type is the most common type. It's more common than the two-cusp type. In this case, we're going to have three pulp horns. From the occlusal, it's got a square occlusal table. Now, we're going to differentiate between occlusal table and occlusal crown here. Okay, so this is an area that they can kind of catch you on if you're not paying attention. Okay, you got to make sure you pay attention if they're asking about the shape of the occlusal table, which in this case is square, or the occlusal outline. So in the case of the occlusal outline, we've got a pentagon, but the occlusal table right there is going to be square. A little tricky, but now you know, and you'll get that one. And the occlusal table, the grooves form a Y shape, just like that. And cusp size, sometimes they ask about which cusp is bigger. The mesiolingual cusp is bigger than the distolingual cusp. And I wrote the order of the cusp sizes right here. And the three cusp type has a lingual groove right here, which completes that Y shape. Okay, the three cusp type is going to have five lobes. And you might see them test you on this fact. Um, you might see questions about the, the pits also. This tooth frequently has a central pit. It's the only premolar that may exhibit three pits. And the total number of pits on this tooth are the same as a maxillary uh, first molar. And so you might see a question like, which of the following teeth have the same number of pits as the maxillary first molar? And you'd have to know that it's the three cusp type mandibular premolar. Okay, the roots. If a mandibular second premolar is congenitally missing, the roots of the primary mandibular second molar will not be resorbed, and the primary tooth may be retained. It's going to be the only premolar with no mesial root depression, and it's very close to the mental foramen. So here's a couple of little review facts. It's going to be the premolar most likely to be congenitally missing. It's the premolar most likely to have a central pit. Remember in that three cusp type, we've got that central pit. And also it says most likely to have a central pit. Remember the three cusp type is more likely than the two cusp type. And it's the premolar most likely to have one root and one canal. This root is closest to the mental foramen. 
n is longer than the first premolar. And the mental foramen is located most closely to the mandibular premolar. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to comment down below. Leave some questions for me. Um, like the video and subscribe to the channel to get updates on when I release new videos. All right, bye.